Now let's go through the virtual memory practice problem. So this first problem was to figure out which of the bits of a 32-bit virtual address are used for the virtual page number, that's the part that goes into the TLD, then the page offset, and how many bits of physical address you have. So here we've got three choices here, or three options here. One is four kilobyte pages on a machine with 64 megabytes of RAM. And we've got two megabyte pages and one gigabyte pages. So let's take a look at this. So for four kilobyte pages, we have 12 bits for the page offset, because we need 12 bits to index into four kilobytes. We've got a 32-bit total of a virtual address. So that means the remaining 20 bits are for the virtual page number. 64 megabytes of RAM, we need 26 bits of physical address. 2 megabyte pages, we need 21 bits for the page offset. That means we've only got 11 bits left for the virtual page number. So you'll notice if we have 2 megabyte pages, we actually have more bits in the page offset than we do in the virtual page number. For 1 gigabyte of RAM, we need 30 bits of physical address. Now, if we have 1 gigabyte pages, then we need 30 bits for the page offset. That means we only have 2 bits for the virtual page number. So if we only have two bits for the virtual page number, that means we only have four pages total for a 32-bit uh, for a 32-bit application. We have four gigabytes of RAM. We have 32 bits of physical address space. So this is kind of weird right here. In fact, this doesn't make much sense. We only have four pages because each page is one gigabyte, and we have four gigabytes of memory. Where this size page makes a lot of sense is if you have a 64-bit application, which can address a huge amount of memory. Then you can have thousands and thousands of one gigabyte pages and it makes a lot more sense. Now let's take a look at TLB sizes. So here we have a TLB and we want to see how much memory we can access with what's in the TLB. So if we have a 64 entry TLB with 4 kilobyte pages, how much memory can that TLB access? Well it's simply 64 entries times 4 kilobytes. Each entry can access 4 kilobytes and we have 64 of them. So that's 256 kilobytes of, of data without having a miss in the TLB. Now if we go to 2 megabyte pages, where we cut our TLB size in half to 32, we can access 64 megabytes. And if we go to that other ridiculously large page with the 1 gigabyte pages but only 4 entries, we can access 4 gigabytes of memory. So as you can see here, the much larger pages, even if we have many fewer of them, mean we can access a lot more data. So the numbers here are from Intel Sandy Bridge processor. On the Sandy Bridge processor, you get to choose which one of these you want. So you can have 64 entries in your level 1 TLB at 4 kilobyte pages. If you decide to use larger pages, 2 megabyte pages, you only get 32. And if you choose to use these huge 1 gigabyte pages, then you only get 4. So you've got this trade-off in there. So notice this is a teeny amount of memory that the TLB can access, but 4 kilobyte pages are the default today. And why is this so small? Why do we only have 64 entries? Well, remember, the TLB needs to be fast, so less than or equal to 1 cycle. So what you do is you add a second TLB with a lot more entries. And the second TLB has a lot more entries, but it takes more cycles. So now if we have a first level TLB with 64 entries, and a second level TLB with 512 entries, we can cover a total of 2.3 megabytes without having a miss, which still isn't a lot, and that's why we often use larger pages for applications that need a lot of memory. So if we look at the machine itself, this is the Sandy Bridge machine, the first level cache is 32 kilobytes, so that's fine here. The level 1 TLB easily covers that. And the second level cache is 256 kilobytes, so this will cover that too. But it also has a third level cache, which is 8 megabytes. So you can't really cover all that third level cache with just these entries in the TLB. And that's part of the reason we have a level 2 TLB, but it's also part of the reason we can use larger pages. Now let's take a look at memory protection with virtual memory. So here we have two questions, and we're asking about these two processes. Here's process 1's page table. Here it's virtual addresses and how they're translated to physical addresses. And process 2's page table with its virtual addresses and its physical addresses. Now, each one of these processes is going to do a bunch of accesses. They're doing the same thing. They're accessing memory locations 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4. And what this problem is about is figuring out how are these two processes using the physical memory. So the first question is which one owns each page in memory? So let's take a look at this. So virtual address 0 gets translated physical address 0 for process 1. So we could say it owns physical address 0. Here we get virtual address 2 is translated physical address 1, so it also adds owns virtual address 1. And we can go through this and we can see which parts of the memory space, the physical memory, are owned by that process. Now let's take a look at process 2. So if we look at process 2 up here, it also has this translation here where it uses virtual address 0 as well. 
So both one and two have access to virtual address zero. So this is a shared part of data. It's between both of them. We can then go through the rest of these physical address translations here, and we can see which part of the address space is owned by process two. Now let's take a look at the order in which they use them. Remember, the programs are going to access the memory 0, 1, 2, 3, and then finally 4. So for process 1, it's going to access virtual address 0, which is going to translate to physical address 0. And that's going to go physical address 0. So this is the first one it's going to access. Then it's going to access virtual address 1, which translates to physical address 5. And that's going to access physical address 5 over here. That's the second one it accesses, and so forth. Virtual address 2 goes to physical address 1. So that's the third one it accesses. Virtual address 3 to physical address 2 goes to the fourth one it accesses. And finally, virtual address 4 for process 1 access, translates to physical address 9. And that's going to be the last one it accesses. And we can do the same thing for process 2. It's going to go 0 maps to 0, 1 maps to 6, 2 maps to 3, etc. So the second part here is setting the read-only bit in the page table so any shared memory is read-only. Well, this is the only shared data that we have, address 0 here, so we need to set the read-only bits for these page mappings from 0 to 0 and 0 to 0. The point of this problem is to see that although we have two processes that both access the same virtual addresses, they use the data in very different ways because they have different mappings in their page tables. Now let's talk about TLBs and caches. So to do this, we're going to give you a bunch of chunks. So first of all, you get a virtual address that's coming from the processor, and you have a TLB. The TLB takes as an input the address it's going to translate and puts as its output the translated address. You've got a cache. The cache takes in an address to look up, spits out the tag for that address and the data, but we're not going to use that in this example, and a valid bit, whether the line in the cache is valid. You also have a comparator for seeing if two things are equal and an AND gate. So there are two things we're going to do here. The first is we're going to connect up the cache and the TLB for different types of organization. And the second one is you're going to find the longest or critical path through the design when you have a cache hit. And this is going to let us know which designs are faster or slower. So here's a virtually indexed, virtually tagged cache. Let's go ahead and hook this up. So for a virtually indexed, virtually tagged cache, the virtual address is going to go into the cache. And we're going to get out a virtual tag. Now, in order to check this virtual tag, we take the full virtual address and we compare them to see if they're equal. If they are equal, and it's valid, then we have a hit. So there's no need to look up in the TLB if we have a hit, because everything in the cache is virtual. The critical path here is just going through the cache. Go down here through the cache. That's the critical path. So this is going to be pretty fast. We're just limited by the speed of the cache. We only need to go to the TLB if we have a miss, so we can get the physical address to go to DRAM. So a question, what happens if we have two programs sharing this cache? Well, we're going to have a problem here. There's no way to distinguish virtual addresses. If two programs both access virtual address 1000 in this cache, the cache can't tell which program it is because it's only using the virtual address. So the problem with the virtually indexed, virtually tagged cache is we can't run two programs in here. We either have to empty the cache between programs, because we don't know which data is which, or extend the cache in some way to know which program each virtual address belongs to. Let's take a look at another example here. Virtually indexed, physically tagged. So in order to hook this up, we can put the virtual index into the cache to look up data. But now we're going to get a physical tag out of the cache. So to compare the physical tag, we're going to have to take our virtual index into the TLB, get out the physical tag. Now we can compare it. Now we can compare and see if the tag's a hit. We can combine that with whether or not the line is valid. And we can see if we have a hit. So the nice thing about this is we access the TLB and the cache at the same time. So we're accessing them in parallel, so we don't have to wait for one or the other. We don't need the physical address to index the cache, which is great. But remember, we talked about in the lecture, because you can only use the virtual address bits here, it limits the size of the cache you can use here. So what's the critical path? Well, we've got two paths here. We've got one path through the TLB, and we've got one path that goes down here through the cache. And so the critical path is going to be whichever one of these is longer. It's going to be the maximum of these two paths. So same questions before. What happens if we have two programs sharing the cache here? Well, in this case, there's no problem. If we have two virtual addresses that are both going to virtual address 1,000, they may find a line here in the cache, but we get out the physical tag. So the physical tag is going to help with our TLB to tell us which program owns that particular virtual address 1,000. So we have no problem running multiple programs here. 
The only problem we do have is that the size of our cache is limited because we can only use virtual address bits going into the cache index. So the tag gives us the physical address, so we're okay. How about physically indexed, physically tagged? So to hook this up, we need physically indexed going into the cache, and we're going to get a physical tag. Well, the only way we can get a physical address is to go through the TLB. So first, we're going to have to go into the TLB, get out the physical address, and put that into the cache. Then we can get the tag, which is also physical, and we can combine that with the physical address from the TLB to see if we have a hit, and the rest of it's the same. So the problem with this one is the critical path. We have to go first through the TLB, then through the cache to see if we have a hit. So the critical path is this time plus this time. So this is going to be a slow design because you have to wait for the TLB before you go to the cache. Now, what happens if we have two programs sharing in the cache here? Well, it's no problem whatsoever. We're only using the physical addresses. So every program is going to have its own physical addresses. So it'll look up in the cache by physical address. It'll find the tag as a physical address, and they'll be different. We'll have no problem here. What about the other combination? So we covered three out of the four combinations. The last combination is the worst of both worlds. Sorry, let me bring it up here. Physically indexed, virtually tagged. This is a terrible idea. It's the worst of both worlds because we have to wait for the TLB before we look in the cache, so the physical index is, and we have no protection from the TLB because we have a virtual tag. We have no way to know if these things are actually matching. So this is a terrible idea. So just don't do this one. And finally, let's talk about the performance here. So if both the cache and the TLB take one cycle to access, how long does it take to access each of these caches we just looked at? Well, for the virtually indexed, virtually tagged, it's just one cycle. We don't need the TLB at all, so it's just the time to go through the cache. But of course, the downside of virtually indexed, virtually tagged is that we can't have multiple programs sharing the cache. How about virtually indexed, physically tagged? Well, again, it's one cycle. We can access the cache and the TLB at the same time. So they both take one cycle, so it's the maximum of one, which is just one, so it's going to be one cycle. This is a great design, but the problem is that because we need the virtual bits to index it, it limits the size. Finally, let's look at the physically indexed, physically tagged cache. Well, this one's going to take two cycles. It's because we have to go to the TLB first before the cache. Take one cycle in the TLB, and then one cycle in the cache. While this cache here can be any size we want, and doesn't have any problems with multiple programs, it's slower. So what do people do today? Well, mostly they use this sort of cache here, a VIPT, virtually indexed, physically tagged cache, for the level one caches, for the really fast ones. And that works good because it's fast, but they're also pretty small, so they don't have as much of a problem with this size here. Then the rest of the caches, for the level two and the level three cache, are usually physically indexed and physically tagged. And that's fine, because if you miss in the level one cache, you've already spent so many cycles trying to access the cache that it's not a problem to do the TLB before you go to the rest of the caches.